see uh, Battlefield coming in as our Three, game one. Two, one Definitely a, a, an incredible uh, Duck Hunt stage. Uh, Fawn is just, just able to set like all of the all of the traps, the sort of like obstacle courses we see when they're able to get like, less trap setups. But I mean, definitely not a bad stage for Robin either. Already seeing some good arc fire combos, her, and of course being the sword character that Robin is. I think, I think the camera's on the edge of the timer, and if it wasn't, he could have they could have comboed into it. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit unfortunate. I both these characters have to sort of put themselves in a position where if they hit you with the right projectile at the right time, you are going to eat like 80%. Oh yeah, like arc fire. Okay, yeah, the can did just go through the arc fire and did not explode. So we have but that. Will the initial hit of it explode? I'm still hanging on here. Ooh, all right, Make Make actually able to get the first stock out of Fawn and getting his Arc Thunder uh, combo starter as well to keep things going. I think that uh, Make Make is also showing knowledge in the matchup, the way that they're dealing with the can. And, oh, interesting, the gunman didn't die from that arc fire. Yeah, I think they have a certain amount of health. But up air, gonna be taking uh, first stock for Vaughn as well. Only 45% extra credit, but in 11 sword combo. <gasps> Whoa! Fine. Duck Hunt has an air dash for some reason. At the same time, uh, I feel like maybe Maki Maki could have tried to finish yeah. the job right there. But anyway. Um, after seeing most of the gunmen, it stays out for a while, even after they've been neutralized, and it ate another one of those up. And right there, yeah, these gunmen are just, they're paying. They are doing their job, and their job is to just get hit in the face. And I believe if you keep hitting them, then they stay out longer as well. So kind of a, oh, a weird, like, risk-reward. Like, yeah, the, the meat shield still stays out, but Fawn can't spawn another gunman. So, yes, but, I mean, also, one of the things we're seeing is that a lot of Robin's projectiles are long-lasting. The arc fires will basically lock them in place and keep mm -hmm. them out there longer because they're burning them. Same thing with the arc thunders. So, okay, I, I like this also. Instead of going right into it, uh, just destroy the gunman with your aerials and then focus on you know, throwing out those uh, projectiles that will give you the advantage you need. All right, Fawn out with a corner setup potentially, but didn't have enough coverage. Forward smash, not able to do it. Great tech. Ah, uh, but went for that high up B, and Make Make was ready for it. Just barely outside of the range of the can. All right, another potential corner setup right now. Another no Sparazzi. Make Make has been healing a lot so far in this game one. Make Make has been, all tonight has been really consistently getting those, uh, those no Sparazzi. Not able to capitalize on a huge hit stop with that Levin Sword, unfortunately. And Spawn has to work a little bit harder to get this second stop. Ah, can't come in. That air dodge is beautiful. Managed to matrix avoid the cam, but not going to be dodging that one. And this is not actually the most comfortable position for Make Make. 71% on Fawn. Yes, it's a very sizable chunk. Oh, I love that. He uses the can to eat the Narc Thunk fire hit so that it wasn't exactly on the ledge where it mm -hmm. limits the most options. Burned by the arc fire again. Fawn finally getting an opening there with the forward air. Starting to get things started. Using the gunman on the platform to try and limit Make Make's approach options. But getting through the can and the clay pigeon. Just barely clipped with the up air and Make Make was able to confirm off of it. Was that late up air? Yeah. Was it weird? Was that up air or back air? That was uh, late up air. Yeah, I want to see that. That was, I can't believe that combo. Yeah. This is actually, it looks like things were getting a little dicey for Make Make. But, and Levin Just Sword came back right back. there, yeah. Perfect time for Levin mm -hmm. Sword to come back. Although, would, 
co like the copper sword, or whatever it's called. The, the bronze sword? The bronze sword. Would the bronze sword up air have comboed into back air? I'm not sure. I think Levin sword has a bit more uh, hit, hit stun, stun to it. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, now we have we have some calm thinking music while we think about our counter pick. Everyone breathe in and breathe out. Yeah, and you were saying that Vaughn had that extremely close game with... Do you know who the player was? Were they kind of an unknown, that Sephiroth? Uh, not a name I've heard before. I think their, their tag was uh, Dave Ska. Yeah, but I mean... Vaughn might be a little bit off-kilter tonight. Maybe. No. I'm not sure what their normal record or the track record against Make Make has been. But... A lot of people in attendance tonight Three, giving them trouble. Two, it could also just one. be that people are leveling up across the board. Oh, yeah. You know, as a top player, who wants that? Anyway, we've got Fawn coming in to a small battlefield for our counter pick, which Ooh. I absolutely agree with already paying dividends. You know, the, the side platforms, I feel like, are what Fawn really wants out of the counter pick because then they get to start setting up these, uh, I call them like the Mario Maker levels where they just get to set down all sorts of obstacles for the opponent to get through. And already getting Maki Maki to 146, getting to set up another potential ledge trap scenario. Not able to find the down air. Invincibility. Great recognition right there. Yeah, just poke him, poke him with the duck. What was that movement? I missed it. Did you get a clip of that? That was like, am I crazy or did something cool happen? Right I don't know, I thought I saw some weird movement. But, nice reversal thunder coming out from Make Make, giving him some space to make it back down to uh, center stage, but feeling a little bit lost in this neutral right now, it feels like. It feels like Fawn just has the entire ground covered, and Make Make just had to give up so much space to try and get his resources started. And then when you're, you know, getting sent all the way to the corner, you don't have the top battlefield platform to, you know, to come in and, and rescue you. Yeah. Honestly, this is a completely different read of Fawn uh, compared to what we saw before. Think, let's go follow the can. Notice how many options it's covering, just the courses it's completely shutting down. This is looking so much better for Fawn. So even if we, you know, we do have Maki Maki counterpick in game three, if this kind of same uh, game plan is going to come back and rear its ugly head then, I don't see Maki Maki having much of a chance. This is just completely one-sided right now, especially the new roll. Yeah, no, I feel like Make Make coming into a potential game three, like, definitely gonna have to change something a little bit more than the stage. The can control right now. All right, gets an arc fire starter and nice use of the nose for Atu. You know, every little percent helps. Oh, still gets caught by the Clay Pigeon, unfortunately. Make Make thought he had a, an in after the arc fire neutralized the Clay Pigeon. Yeah, I, okay, still have the jump, but that was so cute. I'm sad that didn't kill, because that was just like one of the Here comes. That's gonna be oh, cool. not able to get it, but the air dodge. Uh, I thought the uh, gunman got the kill. <laughs> no, never, never in a million years. <laughs> The gunmen have their role. It's not that. Actually, I feel like we saw a lot less gunmen that game. Mm -hmm. Like a lot less gunmen. Yeah, that Instead was a lot it was more all can. about the can. I think that was that's a, like kind of a game plan shifter mm -hmm. where the gunmen were useful for blocking these projectiles, but really what was important was just getting around them in the first place, not blocking them. Like look at this, the way that yeah, Fawn chose instead to jump over them to just put the can and have the can sneak in from behind. A completely new approach, and I agree with it 100%. Yeah, because, I mean, Fawn still had, like, all of the coverage that Duck Hunt is typically expected to have, but a lot of it came from the can instead of instead of the gunman. Coming into Smashville for Make Make's counter pick. So, definitely looking for a, a, a different story from Make Make. Potentially Smashville... Gonna be better for him 
in uh, not allowing Fawn to set up that same amount of coverage. The, the center platform kind of playing a similar role to what the Battlefield platform played in game one, giving Make Make an out coming back into center stage. At the same time, we initially just immediately saw that platform interfering with the arc fire combos. That could have yeah. been really big damage. And instead, all of that was taken away. And now Make Make is the one who's sitting at almost 80%. Oh, God, Not able to get the second one, but can. That can just standing there menacingly horrifying. <laughs> I know. Uses the air dodge really early, but Fawn not able to find the down air. Make Make has another uh, another lease on life. That neutral out of shield was so good. I think that Fawn was really relying on that, basically keeping him locked down. And no, he knows how much range he has out of uh, one of those out of shield options. Great coverage from Fawn there, uh, basically anti-airing Make Make. And we can see, you know, now that we're on Smashville, Fawn is giving up a lot more space when it comes to these, uh, like, ledge scenarios. Fawn wants to, you know, make that same sort of obstacle course using the platform, but now Fawn has to give up more space to do so. Ooh, knocking the can, kicking it down the road, right back into his face. Okay. Ah, again! These, these aerials out of disadvantage. Spawn just not respecting them, and that one's actually going to have to take the stock. I, okay, that's like the second time already within these last two games that we've seen. Fawn just jumped right over. Oh, the evasion right now. Recognizing the holes in, the, like, Robin's area, like the projectiles, just weaving into there and getting a combo start. Make Make on the ledge now. Fawn trying to set something up. An unfortunate, uh, maybe misinput. No, it wouldn't have mattered because if he went the other way, it would have uh, hit the platform. Oh, yeah, you're right. And yeah, I feel like this is looking a little better for Make Make than that game too, but I feel like the sort of underlying themes persist. Yeah, a lot more aggression being careful, but that platform does kind of get in the way of Fawn uh, opening Make Make up quite the way that they want to. Okay, we're seeing, you know, Fawn starting to slow things down. You know, we've seen Make Make get a lot of those Nosferatu, but maybe reading Fawn just a little bit too much in advance, Fawn able to dodge that one and you know, keep piling on this pressure. Oh, Gunman actually hitting. Actually headed a really clutch moment. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the fast one. A nice frame trap by Make Make, putting Fawn back off stage. Great air dodge. Bit, okay, now a little too far away to uh, convert into back air. Ooh. My hat. <laughs> there we go. Does get the clay pigeon into back air that time. That is Fawn with a uh, two-stop for game three. Yeah, and I mean, like, that game one, which was so neck and neck, but it felt like Make Make was in control. As soon as you got to game two, whoa, was that no longer the case? Yeah, it felt like Make Make was just kind of playing on from the back foot the whole time, even, even coming into game three. Yeah, but anyway, um, ooh, let's talk about our next match. It's going to be the HO3K team kill because we have Helper versus John Numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, Helper has been playing Sora, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Typically Sora, I've 